All right, so it's the What Happened to Music podcast. We're going to talk about the Grammy Awards, because I feel as a music podcast, we kind of have to. You know, originally, I was like, oh, okay, we'll talk about the Grammy Awards. I, I don't necessarily hate pop music. I could not care about the Grammy <laughs> Awards. I don't think I've ever watched the Grammy Awards for more than two minutes. Um, you know, I do... I, we are uh, we are yeah. going to be attempting. I am going to be attempting to live tweet this Grammys though. So follow us on Twitter. That's a thing. Yeah. So um, I mean, I I really don't care about the Grammys either. I've um, so, some interesting facts. I mean, um, just in general, award shows uh, the viewership is considerably down. Yeah. Now you could argue that that's because uh, people have so many more choices in media that they can use. Um. But uh, still 25 million people in 2015 uh, tuned into the Grammys. I don't think either of us were one of them. Nope. Um, I know Jason Vio ended up winning uh, for Best Classical Album. Um, he's a classical guitarist, so I saw him. He posted on that on his uh, website. Yeah. Um, the only thing I do like about the Grammys is I feel like it's an actual industry award, industry standard. And, well, they, and they cover... So many different um, avenues of music where there's something for everybody. Uh, unlike the uh, American Music Awards, which I will I will complain about later. Well, touching on two of the points you said. Um, first, looking at their website, which apparently isn't very clear or up to date. Um, it mentions this is that the, the Grammy website. The Grammy website. It said that the 53rd Grammys had 109 categories. The 54th Grammys had 78 categories. Apparently, this year is going to be the 58th Grammy Awards. So there's we lost a couple of years in there. Um, and then somewhere else on the website, it said that the awards are 30 fields with 83 categories in each, which brings you well over a couple thousand categories. So wait, I'm, repeat that one more time. 30 fields. 30 fields with 83 categories each. Well, because I know they do have like a music education. I guess it one includes or... all those random thirty fields. And... Yeah. Well, I have to admit, even the um, the whole um, song of the year, uh, artist, artist of the, of the year, year, song of the year. Yeah, that that all that just the, the wording on that is really confusing. Yeah, it's very specific. Um, also, the way that the Grammys are voted for, um, the the committee is picked by. Professionals who have creative or technical credits on at least six commercially released tracks. So if I put just, out just, just now, it's all time, not six commercially released tracks that year. Not not just that year, just all time. All time. So if I put out six albums commercially, you could buy them, you know, online wherever. Then I might get something in the mail that's like, "Hey, you're a you're qualifying to be a committee member. Here's your ballot." vote for all your categories you've never heard of most of these people which <laughs> apparently um we had a teacher in college who he gets something in the mail every year because he's put out mm -hmm. so many albums and he's like yeah I, I get this and uh i i don't really know who to vote for because i don't i don't i've never heard of most of these people and i'll get phone calls from people's managers saying hey you know we're up for a grammy please vote for us so it kind of sounds like a political election at that point i, I would demand if <laughs> that they send me a fruit basket but i mean even, like even if however many awards there are which i'm confused about um even if we lowball it and say 78 was the smallest number i said mm -hmm. just now that's a lot of categories to actually know who you're voting for oh yeah i don't see how that's uh... um so right away, it's like, yes, it's an in-industry thing, and they have a, what I think is a pretty good way to select <clears throat> people. But at the same time, you know, all your your people that everybody have already heard of, they're going to be the ones who win, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting, actually, you're talking about the way it's selected. Um, and the lesson studio I teach at, like I was talking about, the, the American Music Awards, which mm -hmm. I've, I've... I mean, if I you know don't watch the grammys yeah i will probably never watch the american music awards which i think the viewership is considerably less than half um i'm amazed it's still on yeah um apparently his uh explanation was it was started by dick clark because he saw the grammys and he said this isn't making me any money 
<laughs> so I'm gonna start the American Music Awards. Um, and his rock and New Year's Eve wasn't it, enough. It wasn't wasn't enough. He just <laughs> Dick Clark liked money, um, which I mean, I mean, it makes sense. He was a American bandstand and everything like that. But um, yeah, it was created by Dick Clark in uh, 1973. Mm-hmm. Apparently, when ABC's uh, contract. Uh, expired for the Grammys, so I guess it used to be on ABC. Yeah, and they said, "Oh, well, we'll compete a a um, do a competing venture, if you will." And uh, yeah, apparently the Grammys, which is done from you know recording industry people, you yeah, know, industry people, um, it's done by fans and the public, and the fans and the public vote. All the categories are are one hundred percent pop. And the thing that doesn't make any sense is fans already vote for their favorite artists and albums and songs. It's called album sales. <laughs> and like, they vote with pictures of George Washington. And Yeah, exactly. I mean, correct me. <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, I mean, Billboard already does a, And the Nielsen sound scan does a, a pretty good job of just saying, yeah. oh, this this is the this is the best album of the year as voted on by fans and their wallets as opposed to like some call in show. I, I guess one way to look at it would be what was happening in the industry at the time that the show started. So were award shows popular at that time? Yeah, I think they were. It... So so you know you got that aspect. Like right now, I don't care. I really don't know people who care. Um, maybe there's a lot of people in the on the internet who care. I mean, they're clear, I mean, people watch it. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah, people I want to watch Kanye yeah. West get a soundbite from doing, saying something. <laughs> I mean, I that that's like a that's well, like he a year- is the greatest artist who ever lived. That's true. Um, I mean, that's that's like a yearly event now, right? Like, I I think it's just all melded into like, okay, Kanye West said something like to get like a soundbite yeah. so he could be trending because his music is, you know, just wonderful. <laughs> uh, the only thing I I think I'm at least vaguely interested in is. Uh, I guess I refer, refer to him as jazz piano prodigy, Joey Alexander. Okay. Um, who I have to admit, I usually don't like prodigies, and I usually don't like jazz prodigies. Um, if you if you haven't checked it out, we'll put a put a link. He's a twelve year old kid that's up for a Grammy, and uh, I mean his playing is is much more mature than you would see from your typical prodigy, where it's just normally notes or. Um, yeah, I I suppose like I I really don't care about prodigies yes they're fantastic they're better than i'll ever be and they're only like 10 um but i the thing to note about joey alexander is that his playing is not just technically good but it does show good taste yeah it's but, which is rare in, in younger players especially in general yeah it's um so i'm um, kind of interested to see if he ends so up he's, winning. he's actually up for two grammys he's up for um best improvised jazz solo for playing over giant steps mm-hmm. which i'm not <laughs> and uh best jazz instrumental album my favorite things yeah so i mean that's the only category and i don't even know i want to say that that's not even aired is it probably that's the other thing i mean i'm pretty sure what's and well, what's like up... every jazz festival is actually a rock and roll festival oh that's true but i mean it's it's um or oh, i always find jazz and blues festivals i'm like these are just rock bands <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you yeah, know it's a um so that's the only thing but i i don't I want to say if I watch this, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see that live, unless they decide that the Joey Alexander thing is such a nice angle to play up that they're gonna. Yes, they might. It. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. Maybe I'll watch it this year. Well, maybe I'll live tweet it this year. All right. The tweets are even gonna be boring. I, I don't know who these people are. So you know, we always say comment below. Should we care more than we do? Please uh, leave a comment. Tell us why we're jerks who don't care enough. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there.